that a man can be a better giver when he's broke. With plenty, uh, now I'm telling you statistics now. With plenty comes the rationality not to give. With plenty, I'm telling you now. If God bless someone with 1,000, it can be very easy for him in a small state to say, Lord, I honor you with 200. Because actually he's transacting. He has not seen giving as worship. Some won't give thanks, won't praise. They calculate when praise and worship is over because they are people of the word. I just love the word. And you wonder why you hear it and it didn't become much. He said, Beware. Be careful. There are demonic orchestrations that comes with abundance. That that's when you feel like driving around town at night where some girls are standing. And say, I just want to see them. I'm not carrying anyone. Then the following week, I just want to say hello. Then the following week, it's just one. And before you know it, you have gone on a journey of no return. The things, the foolishness that are not possible in the days of poverty can be activated in the days of plenty. Beware that you don't forget the Lord your God. Beware. Don't do Christ, Sunday pastor, more Christian. Be deep. Be thorough. Fear God, know Him, seek Him, acknowledge Him. It is the blessing of God that makes rich. There is no sorrow. When we are seated in church, in God's house, we learn God's word. We become better. We go back to where we are coming from. We apply it. We are better parents. We are better spouses. We are better bosses. We are better employees. It is not foolishness. Be careful. The days you needed God desperately. Sunday was never a time you want to wash clothes. But now he has answered you. He has given you what you have always wanted. Now he has to start pursuing you. And you will act like you don't even know him. Sometimes the way we treat God is like a boy who is about to get into a relationship with a girl. He will call her in the morning. Hi, princess, how are you doing? Hey, how are you? It's so early in the morning. Ah, so I just want to hear your voice. Uh, and they will call in the afternoon. Have you eaten today? And it's like, yeah, you know, uh, this is okay. I will send some dispatch guys to deliver some things. <laughs> oh. <laughs> then at night he's calling. 8.30. Are you back from work? Oh, wow. So what are you doing now? Uh, well, I'm just sitting, stretching my legs and all that. Oh, so that's good. Is there anything you want me to get for you? And he gets the girl. And she, now she's asking, when was the last time you said I love you? I say, uh, don't, don't, don't you know I, I've been busy and things have been... Um, I'm, I'm, Sometimes you have shown God that you are better off left in the pursuing state for his mercies and does forever. What's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to? I bet it's fear. Fear that whispers, you're not enough, you can't do it, you'll fail. But what if I told you God never intended for you to live in fear? In fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you. And it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 
2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me. Give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical steps to overcome fear. So how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter one, verse nine. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily, remind yourself of God's truth, and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things, it's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter four, verses six to seven tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number three, take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward, through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.